Welcome back, folks, to the round of 16. Match number two at the 2021 Disc Golf Pro Tour Match Play Championship presented by Disc Mania. Brian Earhart here with Nate Perkins. And Nate, we started off the event with a Disc Mania matchup between Eagle and Colton. We now have a Discraft matchup with Adam Hammes and Ezra Aderhold. This is going to be a fantastic matchup. This is a great matchup. The eight seed versus the nine seed. Both players can bomb the disc. I would I would probably give Ezra, you know, a good 20 or 30 feet further than Adam on your average shot. But take a look at the matchup here. Adam has a 7-4-1 and one record over Ezra. And Stat Mando is just killing it, aren't they? Coming up with stats in the disc golf world that no one else has come up with. And I absolutely love what they're doing for the game right now. We move back into hole number one again, starting out of bounds. You mentioned that Ezra has a huge distance advantage. Yeah, At what do you think? You think he's got Adam, it? Adam, this season, there's something that's changed in his backhand a little bit. He is, is bombing the disc right now, and he's winning. First on the tee from Minocqua, Wisconsin. Give it up for our eight seed, Adam Hammes. Yeah, regardless, it's going to be a fantastic matchup. It is. Adams four sits right in the middle of the fairway. You see what I'm saying though? He is no, he's, really he's, moving the disc right now. He does throw it. That, that's why that's why I only gave Ezra a, a good twenty or thirty feet in front of Adam, because this guy right here just gets the disc going. I mean, Especially on he gets that it up to angle. speed. He's throwing it upwards of eighty miles per hour. We're going to get a good look at how how they compare. Ooh, and that flipped up just a little bit. And like you said, not that much different, maybe 20, 30 feet different in distance. But on this hole... Yeah, this is such a tough one to, to birdie. I mean, Adam probably threw 450 off the tee. And with it playing uphill, he probably has a similar distance maybe 500 even into, oh, into the pin. Does it have enough drift to stay in bounds? It does not have enough. You saw he kind of slipped a little bit. Yep. The gr footing was not great on that. The fairways are a little slick. This card teed off 10 o'clock in the morning, a lot of moisture on the yep. ground. And Ezra, with an opportunity, he should just be laying this one up, but he seemed to be attacking right there. And you know, this is his first hole of this match play championship, so it could also just be like an experience with the format, too. I mean, yeah, and he out. went out much earlier than Adam, and so now Adam has an opportunity to take the hole on him. Yeah, and he's no stranger to. Making the circle two putt. It looks like he's right at circle two's edge, just inside. Oh, yeah, this is right in his range. This could be a pretty crucial mistake for Ezra. Oh my goodness, right away, that, that's killer for Ezra Aderhold. That is exactly what you have to look out for with Adam Hammes when you're playing against him is you can't count him out of any position. Adam just took the hole from him. Yeah, that was a, that was a big swing. Definitely thought Ezra was picking one up after. You'd think a putter out of the hand and a chip up to the basket. And, you know, maybe he was thinking 
that Adam was going to do exactly that and that he needed to get to three to score on the hole. All right, hole two, pretty low ceiling tee shot. You can't push this one too straight. As you can see, that side hill is really thick. You also don't want to leak one down the hill. You want to land on that flat golf green. This OB continues all the way up the left side of the hole. This golf green right here is safe, but that sidewalk that you see is only 22 feet long. It's OB and it curls around to that left side. Very tricky par four. And Adam with just a gorgeous circle two putt to kick off the round and take the first point right away. He has the box. And Adam has thrown a solid tee shot there. I think this tee shot benefits Ezra in a way. He does like to throw those more direct, like pushing hyzers, because everything that he throws comes out with that 45 degree hyzer angle. But he doesn't quite capitalize on that. And Adam's way up there. Ooh, and he's going to be on the slope, too. It's just so difficult to approach this green from this side hill. Yeah, you almost want to go against your body weight to prevent yourself from kind of fading left because you are sloped right to left now. Yeah, see? And this is the fatal miss right here, fading out too early. That sidewalk is down there. I believe he might have been safe. Adam is in a pretty good spot. He's going sidearm. Oh, and he is crushed this sidearm. What a shot. That's 425. He's into the circle. Ezra has to make this right here to force Adam to make that putt. And so now Adam wow. can really just pick up or lay up. But he's going to get some putting practice in. And you know, oddly enough, Brian, players are allowed to practice putting during their rounds. Really? Yeah. Pretty wild. Is it due to the fact of like the format change? Yes. Huh. Number three, 700 feet. Long turnover down the beautiful slope. One of the easier threes on the course, but we do have an opportunity for a couple players to hit that slope and with that angle, I think they can get up there for a eagle look, especially a couple of these guys. Oh, so Adam is playing it safe, really safe. Interesting. I mean, he, he must feel pretty comfortable up two through two holes. And I know Ezra doesn't throw a lot of left to right shots. He'll okay. hop to the forehand whenever I've seen him. Wow. And yeah. You called it, Brian. I was totally expecting to see a big bomb from Ezra. I, I just think with how much hyzer he throws on, it's hard especially with how much spin he gets in the disc, to get a disc to flip all the way over from that hyzer angle he likes to throw. Interesting. This disc has done so much work for Adam. Yeah, it's a, one of the best runs of zone ever made. Okay, specific run. It's like a limited edition, old glow, like LE glow zone. And he's put that a little bit short. Ezra has an opportunity to put it close and put some pressure on him. Go 
And that is the pressure that he needed to put on Adam. You saw that float right out of his hand. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit of a wind gust, ever so slightly. Oh, and he's up ways away from the basket. He's lining up a stepper. Yeah, he has to make this now to force Ezra to make his putt. Oh, no. You saw that again. Yeah. There's something up by the basket. This no. is to take his first hole. Ezra doesn't even need to make this. So Adam is one up now on Ezra. Ezra getting to take back that birdie. This is going to be a good match. Hole 4, 435. Slight ceiling off the tee. Players are going to be swinging. The hyzer out wide. There's OB 20 feet left if your circle's edge short. And about 30 feet left if you're right at the pin. Needs to sit. Yeah, Ooh, stuck it. Flag. Big shot. Putting the pressure back on Adam here. Now, what a season Hamas has had. I mean, Masters Cup and Maple Hill. What a dream couple of tournaments to take down. These are the tournaments that people will remember you for winning. And uh, as he throws his shot, I just I want to say that, you know, he's been playing since he was young and. You never know in those those late teen, early 20s years, you never know what's going to come of a young player. And his game is coming along. His focus is seeming to, to improve quite a bit. And uh, he's improving every element of his game. His forehand is getting great. His backhand is getting huge. His putt is better than ever. He has what it takes to jump into that upper echelon. Yeah, I could see Adam winning a, a major, no question. He also has that X factor of just that killer instinct that not everybody has. When he goes into that next level overdrive mode, it's uh, it's scary. Hole number five, 520. This is a tough tee shot. Uh, you either go low ceiling power hyzer, trying to get over the crest of the hill so you don't get sucked in, or you try a cut roller. We were seeing some people in practice try that shot that hits the ground and pushes left, and then trying to attack this sloped green tough hole. He faked me out on that one. Thought he was ready. Yeah, it's a very common result, throwing right into that hill. You really have to challenge that ceiling if you want to try and crest that second hill. I see a roller. He's going to have to hit this on a steep angle. Okay, it's got to be standing up a little sooner than that. Just a little too much cut. It's a tough, tough roller angle. And he pulled it a little bit, you heard him say. It's got to at least get to the base of the hill. He has a 45, 50 footer up the hill for the birdie. It's a nice forehand though. Really tough green to access. That's also a pretty common result hitting that bottom of the hill. Oh, and Adam has thrown a really solid sidearm up into the green. He has a circle one putt for a birdie. And here is Ezra knowing how good Adam is from that distance. Yeah, right. 
Wow. What a putt. And now Adam has to make a circle's edge putt. Standing push putt, 45 feet uphill. This is the split. <gasps> Adam has missed and Ezra has taken a hole on him, moving into number six, 390 feet. Spike Heiser into the mound. We have OB off to the left side. This is just, to me, it's geometry. They pick a point in the sky that they need the disc to start breaking at and they send it to that point. It's kind of like drawing a triangle at that point. I like that, Brian. Yeah, you've heard uh, Dave Felberg actually use that in some of his old clinics back in the day. Something that really made sense to me when I was starting to learn the game. Was that a zone? That yellow one, I believe, was maybe a raptor. I, I, it looks slow. I am not sure that he was throwing the zone on backhand, okay. from what I remember, but... This is a raptor. Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay, a couple of putts for birdie here. Yeah. Nice. Great putt, Ezra. His push putt is so, so smooth. And Adam has a push putt release with a little bit of spin that he kind of puts on at last second. Yeah, I heard we have a that. tie. We'll that see you after the ad break on number seven. Women are being featured in the magazine. The women are out there, the pro women. So then it kind of motivates a lot of us amateurs to like go out there and not be afraid. I would love to see more tournaments like this in the future for women's disc golf. I want to see more women filling spots in a tournament than men. That'd be something to brag about. Disc golf's legit and we're here to stay. And we're going to make names for ourselves. Say yes to disc golf! <laughs> Seven, 765 playing slightly downhill into this bowl and then slightly uphill as we approach the green that bunker plays as a hazard and that golf green long is out of bounds but again this is just an opportunity for these players to throw as far as they can I'm curious to see what Ezra's max distance line looks like. Again, we see him throw a lot of the same angle. I want to see him go left to right. I want to see what this looks like. Kind of looks like roller here. Oh, and he's going with a distance roller. Wow, he laid that one down. Look at that. Great. Fantastic shot. He's going to have a nice putter up to the green. Looks like he threw it around 600 feet. He's got like 150 into the pin. All right, let's see if Adam lays down a roller as well or if he's going air shot. From that run up, he came in at such a sharp angle. That helps with the with the roller, doesn't it, Brian? Absolutely. I mean, again, you need that disc to fly that crazy arcing pattern before it hits the ground. So just like we were talking about with the hyzer, you have to pick the spot in the sky where it's going to be the highest and farthest out to the left and send your body weight in that direction and let the disc do the work. Rollers are, are tough, but alignment is really... Uh, crucial for for laying down those types of shots. Ooh, Adams pulled that a little bit. That's gonna keep coming. He's gonna be on the edge of. Yeah, it's a scary putt. Oh man, it's in a circle, but he's putting straight toward that hazard. And this is so unique about net match play. He now knows their strategy behind this approach. He knows that putting it close is way more important. 
just to put psychological pressure on Adam, and there it is. Yeah, that's the big difference in match play. Normally, you're just in your own world. You're you're typically not paying too much attention to to everyone else on your yeah. card. But this is just heads up, and you are paying a lot of attention to where your opponent is landing. Adam cashes it. Pressure putt there. And you see Eagle and Colton in the background. These two pairs were playing on the same card, but we've clipped them into separate matches. I like it. I like the Absolute. format. Yeah, and really what do you just think? just pay attention to yeah. it. Hole 8, 720. There is OB left, but another opportunity for just a max distance line off the tee. There's a golf green right of the pin. This basket is elevated, and there is OB that continues up that left side. This one not as friendly for the roller, so we're going to see more air shots off the tee here. That is ripped from Ezra. Oh, and he was so close to getting on that green. So Adam is just going with that pink pop top force. Very consistent, stable distance driver for him. Oh, he's hitting on... Uh, ooh, hit that on some steep Anheuser, and that was... Not exactly what he was looking for, but he still, again, has a zone chipper into the green. Oh, oh he doesn't like it. But luckily, it's still within circle one. Again, pressure on Adam to make that putt. This is for us. another split. Tie game right now. Yeah, it's a great match. Pressure putt right here. Again. Adam cashing in. We have just a few holes left, and we are all knotted up. Hole number nine, par three, 555 down the hill. You see some players trying to go straight at the green to slide it up to the basket. You see some players trying to fly the green. Ezra was trying to go straight at it. Man, he just throws it so hard that disc could not handle it. Turned over. Open door for Adam. Is it gonna drift enough? And it's so not. Close. That needs to sit down. Just a tiniest bit more angle on that one. And let's see here. Adam has an opportunity to win the hole. But does he want to run this treacherous 70-footer? Yeah, pretty scary putt here. Maybe a safe run. And we will see where that went. There is a drop-off behind the basket. But if Ezra's out, Adam is not that far behind. Okay. All, right. All square. Three holes remain. 
full 10. It's 510 feet. There's OB all along this left side. You basically have to throw pure hyzer the entire way with how the hole shapes up. You don't really have a ton of space to shape anything from left to right because of that wall of trees. This is right in Ezra's wheelhouse, no. but he did not. It looked like a height issue, honestly. He didn't get it high enough and yeah. it flipped over once it caught that nose down. And again, this is this is a distance that Adam can get to the basket with. He's got a stable force. He's going to be ripping this thing with a little bit of turn. Oh. He puts enough hyzer on it to keep it left. Wow. A little scary. And wow, he's got an opportunity right there. Oh, no, that just came out of his hand so soft. And he has left himself 55 feet. Oh, what a blunder. Absolute blunder. He's going to have a nightmare about that. And, and Adam's still running the putt, almost hitting the bin and rolling. He is going to take a hole here. Hole number 11. This is an interesting hole. A lot of players are going where the drone is flying over the tree line. Big flex Anheuser all the way over the trees. We're flying over the FPO basket and we're flying right up into the corner for the MPO basket. Really interesting tee shot that they're letting the players throw here. Definitely has the height, but is it too high? Oh, and he gets the flex out. Yeah, it's oh. a great shot. He's going to have 350 up the hill to the pin from there. So let's see here. Let's see what Ezra does. Again, a player that's very disciplined on his angles. He's still going hyzer. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so big. Those trees are 80 feet tall or so, and... You have to have 450 to 500 feet of power to be able to clear those trees. And when you're throwing just a power hyzer like that, that's all speed. That's not, you don't get to shape or glide the disc that far. And Ezra still gets up and down. All right, putting the pressure on Adam. He's going zone flick here. This is a long flick. Adam is good with the shot. And he's put it a little short. He's going to have that to stay up one. And he gets it. Nails it. So Ezra is going to be dormy. He has to beat Adam on the last hole if he wants to force it into a playoff. Here we go. Hole number 12, 760, downhill, par four, pretty wide open. The only danger really is there's OB off to the right side if you turn one over. Yeah, there's OB inside as well. Adam just needs to put this one in play. He's got his nice trusty force. He's just going pure hyzer with this one. Just a little bit of turn out of the hand. Oh, there's some wind playing with it. Yeah, Adam just has a big advantage here because he he knows that Ezra has to get a two to beat him on the hole. He's likely going to get a three. So Adam just has to get into play. Ezra knows that he needs a birdie here. Yeah, because with all this downhill... A even a decent shot is going to be over 500 feet with not much left to the pin. Yeah, it's 760, but players were reaching this one in practice. Uh, that looks good if it comes back, but that is quickly going towards the out-of-bounds. That needs to come back. So this actually 
started a lot of controversy. That shot right there that Ezra threw was actually out of bounds, but there was a staff member from the tournament that allowed Ezra to play from the out of bounds, and it might come into effect later in the event. So technically Ezra is throwing from inbounds for this match right here, but he needed to make that because Adam put it so close and there it is right there. What a match. That was a good match. It went to the final hole. Adam Hammes is going to move on to He's round got two. Eagle McMahon. And that does it. In Elite. the Elite Eight, the first matchup is Eagle McMahon versus Adam Hammes. Another phenomenal matchup. Of this two. is great. I love this format. This, uh, this bracket right here, it brings me back to the Smash Bros days. Oh, good times. Wow. <laughs> Make sure to follow Brian on Instagram. What is it, Brian? Yeah, Brian underscore Earhart, and follow you on Instagram as well, Nate. Yeah, Perks of Disc Off. Thank you guys for all the support. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think about this match play format. Do you love it as much as we do? We will see you next time for the next set of matches. <laughs>